guys, KO here. Welcome to Turmeric and Tequila, where we are working to inspire positive, radical social evolution. I'm so excited today. We have another international conversation coming at you on Turmeric and Tequila with Ken Attard. He is coming into us from the Mediterranean. So we're going to have some amazing conversations. He's a mindset consultant, entrepreneur, keynote speaker, creator of the Inside Lane, and founder of Mindset Malta. So lean into this if you're an entrepreneur or anyone out there looking to make some positive, intentional changes. It starts from within, and Ken is here to guide us on that journey. Ken, thank you so much for the time and energy. I cannot wait to see how this grows and continues to positively impact our world. Have an amazing day and don't forget to check us out on YouTube and download us wherever you get your podcasts. Cheers. Welcome to Turmeric and Tequila with your host, Kristen Olson. Questioning a better way, one gracefully disruptive conversation at a time. Welcome to Turmeric and Tequila. I am so excited. We have an international cast coming to you today. I have to give a special thank you to Pod Connect, but I am welcoming Ken Attard to the TNT Mike. He's a mindset consultant, entrepreneur, keynote speaker, creator of the Inside Lane, and founder of Mindset Malta. So I'm so excited to unpack so many of these things. Ken, without further ado, welcome to Turmeric and Tequila. Thanks for having me. I really, really appreciate it. I'm super excited to be here. Yes. Well, so I, I like to um, get to know the background. So tell us about early Ken, kind of how you came to be, because you have a pretty unique uh, stance on life right now. I'm here for all things mindset, but I really want to know like how we really got to the work you do right now. Well, okay. So fantastic. So I uh, right now, as I speak, I am bang in the middle of the Mediterranean Sea on the island of Malta. Um, uh, I've been here for the last 42 years. Uh, I am originally from uh, Toronto, Canada, but I have been here for 42 years. And basically, I am at this point now where if I were to go back, I've been an entrepreneur now for 20 20 plus years. Um, uh, Originally, when I ventured out completely on my own, I got into retail um, uh, for probably about good six, seven years. I was in retail. In the meantime, though, I also got involved in uh, about, I'd say that was about 2005. uh, I got involved in network marketing, where I was first introduced to personal development. And, uh, And to be honest to you, when I when I started listening to some of these speakers and reading some of the books that I was introduced to, I was, I was literally blown away in the sense that um, I was like, wow, like how come no one's ever taught any of this in school? (laughs) And this, one of the things that spurred me on actually, because I said, you know, this is, this is information that people really need to know, you know, at, so that they could really like take an element of control in their, in their life and the way they think long story short, I, I I kept on delving into personal development for, uh, for, for all these years and, and have been, and uh, along the course, I've, I've become an NLP master practitioner as well. And which is one of the tools that I use in, in, in my, in my teaching. And, but, but I've, I've just continued to learn over the years and, uh, I, I have I, one of my first mentors who was actually my cousin. It was funny way back then. I actually got in touch with her in Canada. I was in Malta at the time and was just asking her whether she knew something about network marketing, which I had just gotten into. And, and long and behold, I didn't even realize that she was actually teaching personal development throughout North America. So I said, listen, why don't you come to Malta and let's put, toge- put together an event for me. Um, uh, and she, she did at the time was called success intensive, then became nine principles of personal power. Long story short, it just, my learning just kept on continuing there. And um, she's actually an NLP trainer as well. And I have a lot to be very grateful to her. Um, I say hi to her here from here, Jackie. Mm-hmm. And, and again, I just continued my learning and, I, I sort of was just really dab, not just dabbling. I had, I, I felt I had a lot to offer, but then it was in the end of 2019, I decided, you know what? I really just want to get out there more and, and present what I have to offer out there and just started a, 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 a Facebook page called mindset Malta and was just doing some live live videos with some, what I thought were maybe some essential lessons that people could maybe, you know, tap into and maybe take some, something from it and learn. 
And then lo and behold, we all know what happened in 2020. Yeah. <laughs> so yes. I, I believe that end of 2019 was actually, and that decision there was actually like divine intervention there. Um, just inspiration to actually start that. And, uh, you know, along my entrepreneurial career with my retail, and then I also had a promotional merchandise company, which was actually one of my main focuses up until then. And what spurred me on to do what I'm doing right now in front of you is the fact that I said, you know, I never want to be in a position where something outside of me can literally stop my business um, from functioning. And, and, and I said, you know what, I really want to get a message out there and with entrepreneur. And I decided to work with entrepreneurs. There is a specific reason why, because, you know, with the personal development I was doing and some of the consulting and coaching I was doing, I, I knew I could help virtually anybody with, with shifting their mindset and understanding the shift their mindset. Yet I wanted to niche it down a bit. Um, and, and I invested in myself to learn more, you know, to learn a little more about the tech stuff, learn a little more about marketing, because I really wasn't doing any of that. And I decided to work with entrepreneurs because I truly believe that we have up and coming, up and coming entrepreneurs who are going to be future leaders. We have entrepreneurs, seasoned entrepreneurs now who are leaders already. And amazingly, there are so many who really still don't understand the thinking process that's going on and, and, and do not understand that the results and the experiences that they're having in their life, in their business and in their life, are purely a byproduct of the way they're thinking. So I figured if I can get this message out that they can start to understand this process of thinking and start to shift the way they think, then they could actually pass that information on to their people, start to make a shift in, in cultures in business, and then we can have an even bigger shift you know, I mean, one person at a time without a doubt, but when we can actually shift the thinking and the mindset of, of potential leaders and, and leaders who are already, then I think we can have a huge shift in, in the entrepreneurial mindset as well. And I think there's some, I really believe that there are some fallacies out there when it comes to entrepreneurship that a lot of entrepreneurs have bought into. And I really want, I really want to shatter those beliefs because they really are, they, they really are not the truth. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I agree with so many things you just said, and it's ironic. Um, my T usually has like a quote last, uh, like on the T uh, string. And I was prepping for this cast okay. last night and it said, um, uh, inner peace is world peace. And kind of to just, this is a reaching link, but to what you said, and I do a lot around branding and marketing. Um, and we don't, we get so focused on the end game and, you know, cost benefit analysis and cogs and all these things. But really that the mindset and the human walking into the room setting forth in their task or their mission is like that mind piece is like step one. And so regardless of what mission we're working on, you know, all we're all here kind of to make the world a better place, like be successful, be internally at peace. Um, so I just, I love your position of, you know, we, we can be out here, kind of make money. And, you know, it's that conversation around mindset and happiness and enjoying the journey. And it's so much more than just being a quote unquote successful entrepreneur around money. It's the entire situation and collectively if we're all happier then you know the world really is a better place so lots of cliches. absolutely yeah yeah absolutely yeah yeah there are cliches but you know you know Eve, I, I talk about this so much it was exactly what you're talking about as well about you know there's the click the cliche of you know it, it is a journey it, but it, the fact is that it, it is a journey and and whether you like it or not you are on that journey and it's and it's understanding that when you can actually find a way uh, to to actually enjoy that journey, yes, irrelevant of what you may be, what what may be appear that it may appear that you're going through, uh, when you can really enjoy that journey each moment by moment, then then this is where uh, it's funny. You know, there's so many definitions of what people think success is, and and all of these things, and and the way I look at it is this: is that when you can understand that you only have this moment right now. You, you know, it's a lot of people, like you said, will get lost in the daily tasks, what needs to be done tomorrow, the day after, a month from now, two years from now, and, and which are all wonderful. There's, there's, there's no harm in them. It's not getting caught up in them, though, and, 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 and getting too attached to them. And then you have people who are going to be stuck or, or lost in the past. 
So they're constantly thinking about the past and things that happened and, and worried about the fact that they don't want them to happen again. Yeah. So again, they're getting lost either in the future, either in the past and forgetting about this present moment. And as, 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 as you can learn how to actually be present. So an, another wonderful thing that I, I like to talk about as well. And I, um, I was listening to Eckhart Tolle not too long ago, a wonderful teacher when it comes to being present. And he was talking about purpose. And we hear this a lot now about, about, you know, people wanting to find their purpose and, 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 and which is all very wonderful, which is, you know, when you think about it, it's quite a big question in the sense that, you know, what's my purpose. It's, it's quite, it's quite out there, you know, and people are, you know, seem to be searching for that. Whereas if, if you understand that you only have this present moment and for instance, right now, my purpose right now is to have this conversation with you and to, and to provide as much knowledge as I can or the information for the people who are listening. That is my purpose right now. And me giving you my full attention and being very focused on that is my purpose right now. Once we finish from here, I'll move on to the next task and I will give that my full attention. That will be my purpose, my next task. And as you begin to do this, the amazing thing is that your, let's say your bigger purpose, your higher purpose, if you want to call it, will start to unfold for you. It will start to present itself for you. You know, and I, and I think one of the first things that entrepreneurs really need to, uh, or one of the first stages for anything really is awareness. And, and like I said, I, I believe there are, are many entrepreneurs out there, people in general, but many, let's, let's focus on entrepreneurs who are unaware of the thinking process that is going on, understanding that your thoughts are creating an emotion and simplifying it. That emotion is either going to be a feel good emotion or a feel bad emotion, mm -hmm. essentially. And that feel good emotion or that feel bad emotion is now going to affect your, your, your actions, your behaviors. What actions are you going to take? What how are you going to behave? And those actions or those behaviors are ultimately going to have an effect on your results and your experiences. So now it's a matter of saying, okay, well, I'm, I'm really not happy with this result here or this experience that I'm having. I need to go back and, and actually start to look at the way I'm thinking, my mindset, and how that's having an effect. And there are things that you may not be even be aware of. There may be some unconscious thoughts that are going on that you really need to tap into to start to understand that your thinking is 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 aligned with your beliefs. So, you know, it, you know what is a belief? S simply put, it's a thought that you think over and over and over and over until, you know, ultimately it is a belief. So even just now, if someone's listening in, for instance, and they have been totally unaware of this, even just now, just listening to this, potentially they're going to start to have an awareness, which means now they can actually sort of like take control over the way they are, they are thinking. Now, like anything else, it's practice. It's it's a matter of consistency. It's it's a matter of 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 of, of doing this on a on a daily basis. <laughs> the thing that I find absolutely amazing to me is this, uh, and I, I truly find this amazing is that for the most part, people, you know, entrepreneurs have heard about mindset mm -hmm. in one way or another. They've heard about mindset, <laughs> yet. It's funny. I, it's something that I call the triple U syndrome and you being the letter U. And, and what it is, is basically this is that is that although people have heard about mindset and information is available, it's, it's readily available to anybody who truly wants it. Yes. Right. So, you know, I like to say that that, you know, there's more information available to you in one day today than could have been available to my grandparents in a lifetime. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right? Which is it's good there, and bad. The information. <laughs> Pardon me? I said, which is good and bad. Because there's a yeah, lot that it's you good have to and, decipher yeah. through. Well, it, it, and again, it's always how you opt to use it. Yet, amazingly, even though that all this information is there, the the first U of, of, of the triple U syndrome is it's still for the majority, for a lot of people, underrated. Mindset is underrated. Like if you truly knew that that is your superpower, mm -hmm. 
that it's going to have an effect. The way you think is going to have an effect on every single result and experience in your life. Would you truly underrate it? Probably not, but it still gets underrated. And because it gets underrated, someone might listen to something, you know, really inspirational or motivational. Someone might be listening to what we're saying right now and go, oh, wow, this is really interesting. You know, I want to I want to look into this a little more. <laughs> and, and people will, will look into it for a day, for two, maybe a week. And then yet say, OK, now I'll get to it and sort of like putting it on the back burner. Just saying, like, you know, to put on, I'll get to it. One day I'll get to it. It's really interesting. But like you said before, previously yourself, but you know what? I've got this to do still, and I still have this to do, and I have this task to do, and I have to take care of this, and I have to, and all of these things. So it gets it gets left there on the back burner. And because of that, again, it continues to be underestimated, which is the second you. It just gets underestimated. No different than, and I don't know if this has ever happened to you, but it, it surely has happened to me before is that, you know, I buy a book and for some reason, I don't get around to this book. I just leave it on the shelf. Oh, for sure. Hundreds. Yes. Hundreds. <laughs> right? of yes. It's, on, it's on the shelf. Now, yeah, amazingly, the book is right there. It's on the shelf. It's it's yours for the taking. You just got to pull it off the shelf. And this is no different with your with mindset. It gets underestimated. It gets left there on the shelf. It's there for the taking. The information is there, but they don't. And then ultimately, this leads to the third you which is that it's underutilized. It just gets underutilized. Like I said, it just gets left there. And as I said, if you truly knew that this was your superpower, would you actually do that? Now, I can understand how this can happen. And, and to, I want to let the listeners off the hook here <laughs> because this will happen simply because of what I mentioned before is that so far up until now, Mindset still isn't a strong enough belief for you. Mm -hmm. So because it's not a strong enough belief for you, that's why you've left it there. You, you, you just, you, it's just not a strong enough belief. So you just leave it on the back burner. As you begin to start to dabble and start to understand that, you know what, you can now have some control rather than living, let's say living, let, let's talk about business rather than living your business randomly. So, you know, one day is really good. The next day is not so good. It's sort of like taking a, a, a super bouncy ball in a four walled room and throwing this bouncy ball, you know, and, and this bounce, ball, it's going to hit one wall, hit the ceiling, hit another, you don't know where it's going. And believe it or not, many a person, many an entrepreneur are actually living their life exactly like that because one day's good, one day's not so good, and and they can't understand what's going on. Well, it's it's because there's no purpose in in their in their in their thinking. There's no you know thinking in a in a purposeful way to create the results and the experiences that you want. Yes, circumstances are going to be there always. They're always going to be there. Now it's up to you to decide how you would like to react to those circumstances. I love it. So many questions here um, because what's so cool is the entrepreneurs come into the game and you're obviously focused about your mission, business, whatever your goals, uh, specifically probably around your financial goals. But really, I'm guessing when someone comes in, you address the human first. And the reason, one of the reasons I started this podcast was questioning a better, or our tagline is questioning a better way when gracefully disruptive conversation at a time. So my, what I'm fascinated by is that pivot point when something flicks on in somebody and they're like, this is not for me. And we What's so cool, I really want to acknowledge this, is that we're sitting, you know, worlds apart, having a conversation about common denominators and more importantly, personal responsibility. And, you yeah. know, we're in a political space and this isn't a political conversation, but we're in a political space where a lot of people don't do agree, particularly in America, and it's all divided. However, if we can pull back individually, have international conversations about personal responsibility and understand the way we show up in the world inside our own minds, inside our own hearts can change everything else collectively is a really powerful moment. But before that, you have to have that internal light switch on. So I'm fascinated by the humans that find you that something has happened, something switched on in them. Like I need a coach or I need to evolve here. I need to change something. Um, when they first find you, how much are you addressing like the internal human versus like the business goal it's it it always starts from the internal there's there it, it is impossible it is literally impossible for you to be what i would define as successful without 
going inside. In fact, my program is called the inside lane and there's totally. a specific <laughs> reason for that. Right. So because you got to go inside, because what a lot of people don't realize. And again, I, I want to let people off the hook. And, and the reason I want to let people off the hook is this. And I agree with you 100 percent. It's a matter of being accountable to yourself. You don't have anybody else to be accountable to. Right. It's yourself. Yet many people are lost in being accountable to everything that is outside of them. OK, so they're looking for validation outside of them. They're looking for recognition outside of them. So it could be someone is and this is where, uh, uh, you know, entrepreneurs can get lost in identity. So, you know, it's it's when I was actually just doing a lesson about this the other day about authenticity and how important it is to actually be authentic. I mean, let's let's let, let's 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 be completely transparent here. You and I are talking right now. We have not planned one iota of this yes. conversation. Intentionally it is so. totally authentic. I don't know what you're going to ask me. <laughs> and I don't mind because and the reason I don't mind is this is that. If you ask me something and I didn't know the answer to it, for instance, I have no problem in telling you, hey, listen, you know what? That's really not my forte. I don't have the answer to that. Um, and I'm good with that because that is a huge weight off my shoulders. Yet so many people, so many entrepreneurs are living their lives with a ton of facades in front of them. Mm -hmm. And they're, they're, you know, we use the mask, you know, analogy here. You know, people have been living with masks forever. Yeah. But we just haven't recognized them and, or, 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 you know, we're not willing to look at ourselves and say, listen, I need to pull off it because this isn't who I am. This isn't truly who I am. And 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 without going inside. Then th there is no way for you to actually be authentic or to actually align with your with your true self, with your authentic self. It won't happen. And again, I meant to mention letting people off the hook. The fact is this, and we talked about beliefs, is that you've been programmed with many beliefs throughout your whole life, starting from a very early age from when you were born. Some of those beliefs were in, ingrained into you or programmed into you from your parents. Great intentions. Yet they were passing on what they learned. Now, if what they learned wasn't necessarily, let's say, the truth, it was for them. It was their reality. Something as simple as, you know, if, let's talk about money since we're talking about entrepreneurs. Something as simple as, you know, you have to work really hard to earn your money. Now, if you've heard that over and over and over and over again, that becomes a belief. And you're going to be absolutely right because that is going to be a reality because you believe you need to work really hard to earn your money. Now, some people might be going, some people listening might be going, what are you talking about, Ken? You absolutely have to work hard to earn your money. Well, yes, no. Right. right. <laughs> are there, do you know anybody who earns a lot of money, but actually doesn't work really hard? <laughs> Rich people, mostly. <laughs> well, we the say really that, wealthy. right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, well, we say that. <laughs> and most people will say, yeah, I know someone or I'm, I'm a, and I would just simply say to them, so why can't that be you? Mm -hmm. And, and it's amazing. And this is one of the, this is one of the things that I really want to shatter when it comes to entrepreneurs, because I've sort of let, you know, I, and I say this, this with the utmost respect, because there's a lot of phenomenal teachers out there. There's no denying that there's some really great teachers out there. And it's amazing to me. It's amazing how, you know, in the entrepreneurial world, we hear about the fact that if you want to become an entrepreneur, you need to suffer. You need to sacrifice. All right. And, and you need to, you need to suffer sacrifice and, and all of these things that are related with, you know, really hardship. Mm -hmm. Let's flip that. Who decided that every entrepreneur needs to sacrifice all like their, their whole entrepreneurial life has to be a sacrifice that they need to suffer. What if we flipped it and, and said, listen, what if your entrepreneurial life could be fun? What if it could be fulfilling? Mm -hmm. What if it could be inspirational? What if it could be flowing? What if it could be easygoing? Now, 
before anybody like go flips out. <laughs> I understand that you will have your challenges. Yes. Everybody will have their challenges. That's when you're going to actually grow. Mm -hmm. You're actually going to grow when you have those challenges. Yeah. Yet. And this is where to me, success really comes in. Like I said, is that when I can be going through challenges and I can sway through my crap, smiling and enjoying myself and still finding solutions. Now I'm really, I'm, I'm enjoying, literally enjoying the journey. Yes. It doesn't have to be a sacrifice all the time. It doesn't have to be continuous suffering all the time. Oh. Far from it. Yet in the entrepreneurial world, this has been so ingrained into entrepreneurs, even upcoming entrepreneurs are told, be ready to sacrifice, be ready not to see your family, be ready to, on all of these things. Yes, there are going to be moments where you're going to be putting in a little extra time. Absolutely. But it doesn't have to be forever. Right. You no, know, and, and this is what I see with entrepreneurs who are going down a rabbit hole. And 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 think about it. Most entrepreneurs start their journey because they have a great idea. They want to present it to their market, whether that be local market, the world, whatever it may be. And ultimately, because they want freedom. They want financial freedom. They want time freedom. They want flexibility with their life. They want to enjoy their life. And then they're working 10, 12, 14, 16 hour days, not temporarily, like I'm saying, yet it becomes the norm. Right. And now this is completely incongruent to what you originally started out as a value for you that you wanted freedom. And I'll tie it in exactly with it's not your authentic self right because it's incongruent with your values so it's not your authentic self and now this is where the frustration starts the the stress starts the anxiety and all of these things because you're not living the way you anticipated you were going to live and this is simply because potentially simply because you actually haven't taken the time to actually stop yeah. So many entrepreneurs, one of the first things I have to tell them is you got to stop. Yeah. Because we've been taught, most entrepreneurs have been taught, take action, take action, take action. If you don't take action, someone else is going to be taking action and they're going to be taking a piece of the pie away from you. Yet there's a significant difference between taking action and taking inspired action. Mm hmm. And when you can tap into inspiration and start to take inspired action, you're going to be saving. I can guarantee you, you're going to be saving a ton, a ton of time. When the the pause though, I'm fascinated by that because it's something I had to unpack as an entrepreneur and mostly just a human growing up. Um, but when you pause, everything comes in. Truths are revealed. Emotions come to the surface. Like you have to be ready to unpack some stuff. And it's not like the fear-based conversation, like entrepreneur, it's going to be hard because it will be hard. And I think like, as you said, those working days that are really, really hard are very revealing and build some of your character. And I, and I think just puts truth to your mission um, and that you stay in it, but feeling some of the things that we're really not taught to unpack or feel or address is a really challenging process. I'm super curious. And when people seek you out and like, I'm an entrepreneur, I've got this mission. And then all of a sudden you're talking about emotions and focusing within, how do you manage some of that resistance? Or maybe you have people that come to you that are kind of ready for that. Um, but I, I'm curious, like if somebody's listening and they're like, yeah, you know, I'm an entrepreneur, but I really need like a hard strategy on how I'm going to get from A to B or to my financial goal dealing with this whole internal like woo, mushy or however they label it. How do you deal with some of the resistance of people that don't necessarily want to turn within? They just want to get to the end game of financial success. Yeah. Well, first of all, you know, everybody, and, and I have the utmost respect for, for each and every person. So I, I have no, I, I learned this a long time ago from my mentor as well, is that, you know, I have no right to actually assist someone if they're not actually asking for help. Just like you're saying. Now, when someone's reaching out for help, generally they've recognized that they do they 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 do require some sort of help. Okay. I, you know, the resistance, the resistance with the with the inner game, 
if if there was a resistance with the inner game. First of all, it's really important for me. Anybody who decides that they wanted, they do want to come into the program, I definitely make sure that we are a match first. Sure, because sure. it is totally useless for me to have someone come into the program when I know we are not a match. It's not fair for them. Yeah. And it's not fair for me either. It's 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 actually it's it's not a good energy. It's not a win-win right. win situation. Far from it. The way I like to explain it is this. One of the easiest ways I think of explaining it is this, is that so many entrepreneurs are out for, they're going after the financial freedom, for instance, the, the, the financial gain. And, and again, we're talking about the stuff that's on the outside. Mm -hmm. When you literally start to understand that everything on the outside, as I said, is a reflection of what's happening, happening on the inside. So the stuff on the outside can't happen unless the inside is reflecting the same thing. And you mentioned about going from A to B. This is really interesting because that's how most entrepreneurs will look at stuff, going from A to B. Yet interesting enough, when you start to understand more about the, the, the inner game, if we want to call it the inner game, or going inside or being the authentic self and tapping into that, Everything that you want is actually there. So every all that financial freedom, everything you want, I like to describe it like this. It's sort of like in, let's use cloud because everybody understands cloud nowadays. There's this cloud <laughs> with everything that you want. It's there. It's here. You just need to tap into it. So let's say, like, let's look at mobile phones, for instance. There was always the possibility to make mobile phones. Someone just needed to tap into that energy, tap into that information and, and bring that information into them. So now rather than when you when you go inside, this is the amazing part, because going from A to B is great and people will arrive through what we call what I call sort of like call not old school, but you know, determination, desire and all of these things, which are all wonderful. Yet when you do go inside and you learn to to tap into that energy, call it whatever you like it. So, so again, so people feel comfortable when I say tap into that something bigger than you. Now, some people will call that God. Some people will ca call that energy. Some people call it source energy. Some people will call it the divine. You can call it Bob. You can call it <laughs> Bill. You can call it Jane. It yeah. really doesn't matter. There's just something that is bigger than you. And when you tap into it, everything that you want is there. So now rather than you going after it, going from A to B, you actually start to draw B, that cloud, to you, which is actually a quicker process, which means eventually then you are actually going to save a ton of time again. And again, that time is for yourself so that you can, an entrepreneur can very, can very easily get caught up in the identity and be att very attached to their business. Mm -hmm. very attached their identity becomes very attached to their business so it becomes the be all and end all sometimes they have aha moments <laughs> sometimes people don't it's just their path it's all it's all good it doesn't matter there's no right wrong really and truly everybody is on the path that they need to be on yet you do have a life outside of your business you have your if you want it you have your relationships you have your own personal time maybe stuff that you love to do uh, you know, and and just taking this time. It, interestingly, because <laughs> I'm all about having, you know, I, I, I want people to have the thriving business they truly desire because you deserve it. Yeah. Right. You deserve it. Yet, yet, yet I want you to also have a life outside of that. And, and so many entrepreneurs don't realize, and, and it, it, if you dedicated one hour of time to yourself every single day. Just dedicated one hour of time to yourself, whatever that is for yourself. It could be just, I don't know, sitting in a cafe, enjoying yourself, whatever it is. It could be some quiet time, whatever. But one hour a day, I don't know if people realize this, is 365 hours in a year, which is the equivalent of 45 eight-hour days. <laughs> now that's pretty significant. Yeah. Because if you were just to tell an entrepreneur outright, okay, you can go and take 45 days off, they'd probably flip out like 45. No way. That is not happening. Yeah. Right. For I can't, I can't do that. 
Yet one hour a day actually, you know, turns into that. And to me, that's like absolutely significant because there are some people not dedicated. You know, that one hour a day could be, uh, you know, an, an hour dedicated to relationships in your life, to dedicated to he- your health, dedicated to your personal development, whatever it may be. Yet there are so many entrepreneurs, like I said, just going down this rabbit hole that, you know what? No, I don't have time. No, I don't have time. I don't have time. I don't have time. I don't have time for anything except my business. Yeah. Yeah. The beliefs. You get wrapped up into the, the beliefs. beliefs. Absolutely. Absolutely. But you talked about, um, you know, I think leaders are going to be seeking you out so then they can in turn go back to their businesses and shift and create the culture at the business. Um, and there's that ripple effect. What I'm super passionate about uh, are our young humans and our kiddos that are consuming the reality via their phones, you, you know, every single day. And as a branding professional, that's where I felt obligated to um, be intentional about these kind of conversations to bring some truth to the game and highlight uh, really what I say, my varsity humans, my influence that are questioning a better way. So I'm hoping that parents are coming to you and in turn, it's not only going to their business and their corporate culture, but their family culture at home. How intentional are you or are you at all um, about getting in front of young people? Or are you hoping that the parents are coming to you and it's it's just going to the home that way? Because I would love to see some of this like in high school, maybe even elementary school. Um, but it's a tough it's a tough line to cross. It, 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 it is. I, I understand what you're saying. And, and I, whenever I do have the opportunity to get in front of, of young students, I was actually looking into the possibility of actually doing some mentoring for, for, for some students as well. Um, I have not received any information back about that, but I did, I did delve into that because I think it's absolutely, you know, I think it's essential that, that, you know, it's essential because if they if they start to learn from again from an it's it's a little easier because there's less unlearning that has to go on mm-hmm. <laughs> with adults exactly. with, with you know there's there's a lot more unlearning that has to go on right because people have learned a certain way yes. and that's fine it's okay it's just that there is a different way and we we're even seeing this in businesses today so mm-hmm. the 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 younger generation so even when it comes to work in the workplace they they want purpose in their work. They're not willing just to go to work. They want purpose in their yeah. work. And purpose, believe it or not, there are studies that have shown that this is why this is why people are leaving their workplace. It's because of culture. Mm-hmm. It's not because of pay. The majority leave because of culture. And culture is created from the top. Yep. Because everything happening on the bottom is a symptom of what's happening on the top. So if the leader of the organization believes in an 80 hour week and expects that from his employees, he or she is going to create that culture. It's as simple as that. They're going to create that culture. Yet the younger generation coming up, that is not what they want. You know, they get, they, you know, they tend to get a, 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 a hard, they, they tend to be given a hard time because the younger generation want, you know, they talk about, you know, a lot of people talk about because the younger generation want to be entitled and, you know, they want to work less, but they want to make more money. Well, think about that for a second. They want to have purpose in their work. They want to work less because they believe they have a life outside of their work, but they still want to earn a reasonable or a, a, a high income. Now, is that such a bad concept? <laughs> it's actually quite brilliant. Yes. Agree. Yeah. Right? Agree. We're just not used it's to it. Actually actually quite, that way. Yeah, exactly. We just didn't grow up that way. And so, you know, people will be the first, you know, to, to point point fingers and say, oh, but you know, you're, you're feeling so entitled. You don't deserve to have it right now. You know, how hard I work to get to. And they're all, they're valid, yet yeah. things are changing. Right. And change is you know, one of, one of you know, I, I mentioned one of the first pillars of my arc method is awareness. The second one is adapting, which is change. Because change is happening. It's constantly happening. It's yes. the only thing that's constant is yep. change. And the more you are open to accepting the fact that things change and you can flow with that, it's going to be a lot easier on yourself. Mm-hmm. Right? And change can be really good because you could actually start figure out how to do things even better, you know, and then there's alignment, which I've already spoken about, which is a core pillar as well. And then there's applying, which is, you know, 
taking the inspired action and, and, and doing what you need to be doing to move to that. And when I say doing what you need to be doing, as I mentioned before, you know, stopping in and in of, itse- of itself is an action. It is an action, mm-hmm. the action of stopping. <laughs> and sometimes that is required. And then the final pillar is allowing, which is all about trust. And as we said, trusting the journey, trusting that it's unfolding exactly the way it's meant to unfold. Because if you are learning to align and you are tapping into that higher energy, your your authentic self, everything you want is there. It will start to unfold. And just trusting that journey that things are working out. Things are always going to work out for you in, in, in one way or another. Things are always going to work out for you. And as you begin to trust that, and the cool thing is when you start to trust your authentic self, that's what you start to emit out there. And as you emit out there is what you're going to start to receive back. So now you're going to be uh, interacting. You're going to find yourself in circumstances, situations, meeting people that you can trust as well. And how amazing is that? And how powerful is is that? I think who you surround yourself is everything. And that's a lesson I've learned over and over and over again. So I'm very appreciative um, when a common denominator brings humans like yourself into my world, because obviously I'm intentional for my cast to be uh, for the listening audience. And I get so much out of every single conversation. And I love being around. I'm, I'm an, a longtime athlete. I don't know if sports are in your background. And that's kind of where my mindset, uh, mindfulness journey began. And I cool. to be intentional about unpacking it further as an adult. Um, but I was so used to this team effort. So now through the podcasting community or just my intentional humans in general to be alongside that in the mix and have intentional conversations, it's validating and it's inspiring to carry on and to continue to evolve. And I love that you highlighted that. So, because it's any sort of complacency, which can really happen as we get older, entrepreneur or not, it can really um, mute our, you know, intention as well, our purpose, our being in alignment on so many levels. So that constant change, that constant adaptation, that constant evolution is really a great thing, but we have to work at that as we get older. And it's, it's not something that you go on the playground and you fail and you try and you get up, you get back on the tire swing. It's, we got to stay in it. Um, For anyone that's listening, do you have a pro tip or a way that's, you know, how, if they're kind of questioning a better way, but they're not sure how to take that first step on something that they could do to be clear on what their next move is. Something to be clear on what their next move is, Mm -hmm. you know, something that is really simple, believe it or not. And again, you, you could call it a cliche if you want. I highly suggest with people, if they want to start let's say being their authentic self and, and and starting to understand, I would say start your day, just start your day with some gratitude and appreciation. This is a really simple step to take that so many people um, actually forget because there are so many things I can guarantee you there are so many things in your life for the person listening here that potentially you are taking very much for granted. Mm-hmm. So, you know, something as simple as being grateful for the bed you slept in the past night, something for being as simple as grateful for running water that you have, uh, for the fact that you have food in the fridge, that you, if you're working, that you have a job to go to, if you have a business, that you have a business to 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 go to, um, that you have the opportunities to learn, that you have the opportunities you know, that grateful for the technology that you have in front of you to be able to learn more potentially and to connect with people. Grateful for family, grateful for relationships, all of these things. If, if, if someone took the first step of just appreciating every single day and showing gratitude every single day, what this does is actually set the tone for the day. So just as I said, being your authentic self, and trusting yourself, and that's what you're emitting. Same thing when you go into appreciation mode. You are literally emitting a transmitter of appreciation out into the universe. The universe has to reply, has to respond accordingly, and it responds with more opportunities to be appreciative of. So if you happen to be walking down the street and you come across a penny, Rather than say, oh, it's just a penny and just kick it to the side, 
take that penny, pick it up, be very appreciative. Thank the universe for this money that you've just thrown at me from nowhere and, and be grateful for it. And you can pass it on without a doubt if you'd like to, yeah. but show appreciation so that you can continue to receive more things to be appreciative of. This is a really simple process that anybody can start to do because whatever you're going through in your life right now, because some people could be going you know, through some very difficult moments, I can guarantee you, you still can find things to be appreciative of. And this is what's so essential in flipping the way you think, because once you go into appreciation, you're starting to look at the things that are working in your life. Many people, entrepreneurs included, tend to look at all the things that aren't working. And as they look at more things that aren't working, they create, they attract, they bring on to them more things that aren't working. Mm -hmm. So this appreciation helps to flip that switch immediately. And I highly suggest you can do it whenever you want throughout the day. I highly suggest that you do it first thing in the morning. Just you might have not even got out of bed yet, which is a great time as well. And you and you just open your eye, not even open your eyes. You can just be grateful, like I said, for that, for the pillow you slept on. You can be grateful for if you have your partner next to you, grateful for them being next to you. Hopefully most people are. <laughs> <laughs> whole other podcast, but yes. Yes. That's all. Yeah, I know, I know, right? Uh, so 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 I think this is this is something very, very simple that anybody can do. Completely agree. Uh, I love it. If you're if you're kind of questioning a better way you're in it, please check out what Ken um, has going on. I think it's really incredible internal knowledge, and it, it will absolutely lead you to, to your financial goals. But the key takeaway, in my opinion, is you know seeking that internal in, internal peace, living in alignment, and really living um, a fulfilled life. Because in in reality, all of our time is finite. We have X amount of days. So if we're not enjoying that journey, it's it it, it kind of doesn't matter if you end up with billions of dollars or not there's just it doesn't really matter so please, it, it has it yeah yeah it's sorry just, sorry it, my apologies go ahead well, that's it. i mean I was, I was wrapping up that's that's just kind of it it just it's it's a short thing so i think people like yourself that are out there you know spreading the gospel of internal wellness and um and deep purpose it, it's everything and collectively i think that can shape us for a greater good internationally so um but can tell us uh where where can we find you where can you find me? Well, what I'd like to do, I'd like to offer your, your listeners uh, a free gift. Please do. So they, yeah, they can go, they can go to my masterclass. Um, uh, all they have to do is go to adapt and pivot now.com and is the word and so it's adapt and pivot now.com and they can find out, they can, they can, they can, they can find out some secrets as to the reasons why they're not actually adapting and pivoting right now. And, and, and if, and, and they, they just have to opt in there. It's completely free. Um, so I, I highly suggest that if people would like to know more about the, uh, the inside lane program, they can go to the successful entrepreneur now.com and they can get more information about the, the inside lane program. If it resonates with them, they can, they can, they can get even more information there and they can, they can actually apply to see whether they qualify to be a part of the program. So, um, those, I think those would be the two best ways for them to actually, actually get in touch with me if they'd like to. Amazing. I love it. And I love that there is um, connection over uh, internationally. Like it's so powerful how, you know, we can bring yeah. this large world, but really it's small if we're intentional yep. about it together. Um, Absolutely. So Ken, I really appreciate your time and energy. I'm so excited to see how this grows. And ideally, we, we I think I hope we cross paths in real life at some point um, because I really appreciate it. That would be awesome. Yeah, the like-mindedness and um, my mission-driven humans are always my favorite. So I love what you're doing. I wish you nothing but success, but I really just can't wait. Maybe we'll check in in like a year or so and see how things have just grown. Sure. Likewise, I wish you all the success that there, that there is out there. Amazing. Thank you and, so much, And Kim. the peace. Yes. And the inner peace. And inner just peace. one last thing I want to remind people, if I can. Yeah. I, and, and, I, and I think this is really important. Listen, whoever's listening, you are beautiful the way you are right now. You are perfect the way you are right now. You are where you are meant to be right now. And remember that this life is way too short. So remember to laugh a lot, lot more, especially when you can laugh at yourself. Amen. It's just not that serious. <laughs> no. 
<laughs> Thank you, Ken. Uh, let's wrap again soon. Take care of yourself. You too. Take care. Thank you for joining Turmeric and Tequila with your host, Kristen Olson. Tune in next time and don't forget to subscribe on Apple, Google Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen.